is going on, Wolfpack Nation? We are back once again, y'all, with the Tuffy Talk live show, y'all. And we are feeling good. We are sitting here eight and three, y'all. Huge, huge wins. Four in a row. Go to Hell Carolina Week is started today, y'all. And we Sir. are ready to rock and roll. We I mean, it really cool. started Saturday night after the game, but I digress. Right. You know what I mean. It yeah, never yeah, ends. Yeah. <laughs> well, 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 hey, 24 hour celebration rule. I always say you gotta, you gotta there you do go. 24 That's hours, fair. celebrate the win. And now now we're on now we're on to UNC. We're on to UNC. Hold on, uh, Michael. Are you <laughs> rocking the new home field jacket? Yeah, oh, I got the jacket. Oh, there we go. Too. I'm wearing it to the game on Saturday. I'm so excited. I gotta take it off though. It's too hot. I just wanted to put it on. <laughs> ah, there we go. It, it brings out your eyes. You look good. Oh, <laughs> all righty, y'all. So, uh, with that being said, first and foremost, y'all got to start this off as I know a lot of people in here or a lot of people that are going to be tuning in uh, have a lot of interest in us picking our winner for the Jimmy V Foundation giveaway. And uh, we will be doing that later on here in the show. So, make sure to stay tuned for that. But, got to give a shout out to everybody once again, y'all. As again, we raised $670 uh towards uh actually i think actually got to uh, almost 700 dollars. actually uh, we had one final donation nice. there at the end so either way about 700 dollars that i've donated to the jimmy v foundation y'all towards an amazing cause thank you all so so much for your generosity and uh for those who entered and we wish everybody best of luck as again we'd love to you know see everybody at the game but we were very excited to host uh you know the two winners here on saturday night 8 p.m uh what is it now five days from today from right now we'll be kicking off from right now we'll be kicking that ball off uh but we have a ton to get to here today y'all but uh greg being uh being at that vt uh, in blacksburg um on saturday man kind of kind of give me your initial thoughts being there live in person man overall thoughts on the experience you know was the, you know even coach doran said the VT Blacksburg atmosphere was absolutely as advertised. So, I mean, kind of give me your thoughts. Yeah, we had a great time. Uh, we tailgated in the Wolfpack Club lot at the Lions Club and uh, a lot of red in that lot. I uh, got to meet some new folks and uh, some friends of the channel. We got lots of uh, props, everyone. I got probably about six or seven people come up to us and said they enjoy what we do. So, shout out to those sure. guys and gals. Um, yeah, good environment. Uh, you know, inner Sam, man, this is the second time I've been to tech uh actually yeah second time and enter sandman just wasn't doing it for me daytime environment's just not the same as a nighttime one um we came out and got the game going we got you know our and it was a little bit of a slow start on both sides but once we got going you know we scored on like what four or five possessions in a row um but it was fun uh yeah got cold i like it i mean it got really chilly <laughs> it was really nice we were my wife and I were in the sun to begin with, which is the one time that I was excited to be on the visitor side in the sun. And then about 20 minutes into the game, it dropped about 20 degrees. And I was like, oh, this is what we're doing tonight. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, good time, though, especially when you win. It got loud after the game with a lot of Wolfpack chants, which is my favorite part. Amen. Absolutely. All right. Anyway, y'all, now that we got Macon jumping in here, what up, Macon? What's up, guys? What up, what up? How are so, you so, so you jumped on the perfect time, as I, I was really thinking to myself. So, Macon, did you – uh Call your v Virginia Tech friends uh, up uh, on Saturday. No. Oh, was oh, yeah. ask, him, ask him what he thought about the environment. He was there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, Greg, I'm curious what you thought. Uh, yeah, I mean, sure. Virginia Tech, Virginia Tech, it's a, it's a good environment, man. It's one of the mm -hmm. best in the ACC. And I love Virginia Tech in that regard. Like, it's not it's not NC State, but, like, it's it's fun place to go see a game. And yep. um, it's as close as you're going to get to NC State in reasonable driving distance. Uh, maybe other than the Clemson. Um, so, you know, for me, what I actually was, you know, what I was kind of surprised about, Greg, and I don't even about it, I was, I was not like taken back by like how loud it was. Mm -hmm. Where you, it was, it was kind of like, I mean, I know State took him out of the game early, but I was kind of like, yeah. this is not as, you know, rowdy, uh, rowdy, or as like impressive or as gripping as you would think like oh my gosh like, like i remember clemson last year i was like wow that's yeah. different <laughs> yeah that's but different. that was also a night game too right so a little bit you know yeah people get, i know people get juiced up a little bit more for a night game that's fair and that, that's for sure but i was kind of like okay like I, I mean this is not as impressive as i thought i remember maybe the last game i went to seven years ago was but yeah or eight years ago i guess but it was um Man, I I love the game. I thought State really took it out of them early, and that kind of made you know helped what I'm talking about there. But yeah, uh, I just, think 
Go ahead, Greg. I was just saying, I think the best, you know, obviously got loud for Inner Sandman. That was probably the loudest it got all day. Uh, thankfully, when they started their comeback, three quarters of the stadium had already left. So, you know, when we right. when we had the ball late in the fourth quarter, there wasn't a lot of that noise that they that you would probably have hoped for earlier in the game. Uh, so that, like to your point, we took them out early, and uh, I think that really paid dividends in the fourth quarter when they did try to mount that comeback. Yeah, I mean, I will say as a plug. If you guys love being outdoors and that kind of stuff, Blacksburg is a great place to go yeah, and just cool. vacation for a weekend. I mean, honest with you, or like a like a long. I mean, it's, it really is nice, uh, particularly in the summertime when there's not a lot of college students there. Go to the New River, go do some hiking around there, just enjoy the you know water. It's it's a really beautiful place. Um, and heck, if you want to go do city stuff, you got Road Note out the road. So yeah, yeah. Um, and the, the one thing I'll say too is they've got really good fans there. Um, yes. You know, um, I, I, I enjoyed, I was trying to find this picture. Um, I meant to post it, but, uh, the lady in front of me even had a pen that said beat UNC. So we were friends for about three seconds <laughs> before the game kicked off. Um, <laughs> I love but it. yeah, good friends. I mean, good fans. Yeah. Um, so one thing, uh, which, uh, you know, Dennis, uh, already uh, in here in the chat, bring up a great question, which, uh, we didn't really have a chance. I'm sure this would have been a toughies mailbag question, uh, yeah. uh, if this news had happened earlier y'all, but obviously the biggest news, uh, happening over the last few hours that Michael Allen has decided to, uh, sit out the, the, the game against UNC and, uh, and, and what was his words? Red shirt that, that he was, or well, I guess he's not red shirt, but that he's going to transfer. Did, his, did, he, yeah. did he say transfer? Yes. Yeah. Gosh, but yeah, did he say transfer? All right, cool. He said transfer. All right. <laughs> Is that um, shade? I feel like that's shade. <laughs> no, oh, no, because, because, no. because, uh, because okay. it, it was, it was at the I, whole. Yeah, yeah, no, I thought you were alluding to the previous uh, red shirt situation. So, <laughs> no, 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 no. But gotcha. anyway, y'all, so, uh, you know, Kind of give me he your can't, first he thoughts. He can't redshirt, can he? Because he played five games. Correct. Exactly. Yeah. So, so, yeah. 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 So, I'm looking here at the I games. He, Wake, Miami, Clemson, did he, Duke, did he Marshall. Did the word redshirt? I thought he said redshirt in his – no, he didn't. No, he, he said did. enter the transfer portal as a true yeah. sophomore, which is kind of weird wording. He's a sophomore right now, so right, I don't know. Right, I thought the same thing. Well, that's what threw me off. That's why I thought he was redshirting because of that. Yeah. Right. I was confused about that as well. He he didn't necessarily Maybe use the word know. redshirt, but he said true sophomore. But again, he did play in more than five games. Yeah. yeah. And you got Michelle saying, "I wish he would have waited until after this week." So uh, I mean, Ken's. I mean, I mean, tell me your thoughts here. You know, do you, do you feel pretty confident heading into UNC with Kendrick Raphael leading the way? I feel confident heading into Carolina week, no matter who we have on our team. There we go. <laughs> she's, she's always going to give a 13. I'm never going to give Carolina props. Mm-hmm. I don't like, I really, I'm getting real irritated and tired of the whole quitting in the middle of the season. Um, I don't know what yeah, it is. That's, that's three players now, right? Houston, yeah. Morris, and now Allen. And then Crow, Crowell, he quit too. But oh, I mean, I he did it. He hit the, his yeah, reason was great. Um, yeah. But it's just – it's frustrating, and I'm just – the guys going into this week, I'm sure that's not what they wanted to focus on like they did against Wake. They wanted to have the whole team and just be completely focused on Carolina, and now they're going to have to switch some things up. And I'm just hoping – they've overcome adversity so far, so I think they'll do it again. But I just – it frustrates me for the guys on the team. Yeah. Well, it, it, it kind of my thing is I'm looking at the stats here, and so – uh, so Kendrick Raphael's ran the ball 53 times as and has got and uh, Michael Allen ran it 53 times. So they literally both have the same number of rushing mm. attempts. Raphael has 249 yards rushing. Michael Allen's 255 yards rushing. So Allen literally has six more yards uh, over all the carries than Raphael. Uh, so, and then when you look at the passing game, passing game wise, Kendrick has seven targets, six, six catches for 60 yards. And then Michael Allen has 13 targets, 11 catches for 66 yards. So, really, I'm sitting here saying that, I mean, and yards after contact, Kendrick Raphael's 2.85 yards after contact per attempt. Michael Allen's 3.32 yards per contact after attempt. So, to me, I'm sitting here saying that, I mean, they're very, they're very, very close, very, very equal in terms of yeah. uh, effectiveness this season. So, I, I especially, too, when, when Michael Allen went down, you know, and I, I, I'd asked a question last week being like, is this Kendrick Raphael's backfield? And, and you know, I was kind of more not understanding of the situation that Michael Allen was uh, got injured. But I mean, definitely after this week, even before the Michael Allen news, I was saying, "Man, Raphael, I mean, like he's he's not he's not blowing the doors off necessarily, but he's effective." And he, uh, I mean, especially a true freshman that's as effective as he is, and 
he's been able to stay healthy, knock on wood over here. I mean, the best ab ability is availability. So he's been available. He's played well. He's young. So do you ride the young hand and give him some opportunities? And, and now you're saying, well, yep, now we're going to. <laughs> so. yeah, he's done a really nice job catching the ball out of the backfield. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. he, he had a couple catches uh, there. I want to throw this note up here real quick. This is an interesting sidebar. Uh, Dalton here with Anthony Carey decommitted today. Uh, there is a NC State tie there. Which correct, correct uh, for giving information on Anthony. So he's the oh, yeah. he was the trans he was a commit to Michigan he, State, correct? Correct. Four star. correct. Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, he and Brandon Cleveland were teammates at Carrollwood Day High School in Tampa, Florida. So there is a little connection there. Don't know if that means anything. Uh, maybe uh, maybe Michael, you can run over there tomorrow and talk to the kid and see if you can get him. Uh, oh yeah. Get him. Get him. Get him committed. <laughs> You're right down the street. Yeah, Michael. Right? Come on, Michael. Do your job. <laughs> no. But anyway. So, 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 Lindsay, give, give us your thoughts here. Yeah, I don't know. I thought this was weird, um, especially when there's not a red shirt opportunity here. I'm with Greg. I thought the wording of the tweet was weird. He said true sophomore. That made it seem like there was some kind of red shirt possibility, but there's not. So that leads me to wonder, is he not playing because he physically cannot after getting hurt? Is he trying to prevent further injury or is it something personal? Um Getting he in the way go for a medical red shirt too. Is that possible? Yeah, maybe I was about to say he could. I don't I mean, know. I think you can like. Yeah. But like, how many games like for it? Right. Yeah, I'd be uh, interested to see with that because he did play a good bit this season. So yeah. if that would be an NCAA decision. Yeah, yeah I don't know. All so the late in the season, I feel like this would be it would be weird to get a medical red shirt, but um, yeah, I guess we'll see. Yeah. 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 I would yeah, think I'll look. Like, Usually, medical red shirt is if you've already used your regular red shirt and then you get right. hurt like early in the season and only played a couple exactly. of games. But yeah, you know, it's a, it's I, I, I was just go ahead, Mike. Uh, go, go ahead. No, I was just saying, I was just trying to think maybe why he would use that exact wording. So, yeah, I know I saw uh, Miss Kathy made a comment about how like it would be better without him. Um, you know, I for me, I do think it's a and she meant like we play better when he's not there. I get what she's saying. I mean, to me, I think it's a big loss because it's a, it's a depth piece there. And Michael Allen's a very talented athlete. His struggle was pass blocking. And I kind of went just just real quick while we're talking, just kind of go look back at the, the pass blocking grades. Um, honestly, they're relatively similar. So our, Raphael is not necessarily that much better than um, Allen at pass blocking. They're, they're very similar players right now. Uh, well, the one thing which I will correct you on, though, is that against Virginia Tech, he had an 80.6 pass block well, grade. He did. He no, I mean, it, it was his best pass blocking game. But like Allen, I look back. Allen on Miami was like the second or third highest pass blocking grade on the team a couple of games ago. So it was. I mean, the guys are, you know, playing similarly now. Again, Raphael had a good pass blocking grade, you know, the other day. But like I'm looking here, Allen was fifth. I think maybe the Miami game was Allen's best pass blocking grade. I don't know how many times he was asked to pass block. Um, I can look that real quick, um, but he had like a seventy something grade, a seventy two grade. Okay, so he had one. He had one play. So that maybe that's like the one play he did great on. But that was, you yeah, know, I, yeah. Let me. I'm going to check the Virginia Tech game to see how many snaps. Well, right, and the one thing which I'll add, the one thing I'll add while you look that up is got to keep in mind once again, y'all, that Seven. that we we didn't put Kevin Concepcion in the backfield as a as a you know running back just because, right? You know, now I mean, part of it was because we wanted to get him more touches, but partially too, it's because we needed some more help in terms of running the ball more effectively. But uh, go ahead, Macon, give us your thoughts. Yeah, I I just think it's a uh, it's interesting to me that Michael Allen is leaving now. Uh, I, I honestly think it is a loss for State. I mean, he could work in the offseason and get his pass blocking better. Him and Raphael could do it together. I wonder if he's not wanting to share the workload and he wants to be a future guy. I wonder if I it know. is maybe something Jonathan in the background. Jonathan Taylor's coming in, so. Yeah, yeah but he's not necessarily true. a running back. Now, some people think he is going to be best suited as a running back. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, there's no I, – I don't know. I think maybe if you're Allen, you were, you were you had you flashed last year, you come in this year, you bring in Raphael, and he's starting to kind of split snaps with you. And there's Mims there taking stuff away. Um, Mims is taking a lot. Right. So yeah. it, maybe he wants to be more of a featured piece. Uh, I don't know. I, I really – I do think it's a loss for State. And, yeah. Um, well, at least in the short term, right? I think there is stuff coming. Yeah. 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 I think, yeah. yeah. I think it depends on who you uh, – yeah, who you're placing with. Mm -hmm. 
But he has not played a lot. Not, Michael has not played a ton, right? We said five games, right? So, yeah. Um, and, and limited, and limited, limited action kind of in those games. Right. Yeah. yeah. What, um, so I know DeMarcus Jones had gotten bumped from the depth chart. Is he back on the depth chart now with this news? Or kind of the I think he's hurt now. too. You think he's hurt too? Yeah, I can I check real quick. He, was, he, he wasn't. Yeah, he he was hasn't. No, he hasn't dressed out in like four weeks. Yeah. He's hurt. To me, to be honest with you, I don't want to say I want to say I'm hurt, but I'm like, I'm okay with not playing Demarcus Jones. I don't want to sound bad, but it's like we don't need four or five running backs or rotating through to play. Like we need like two, maybe three, in my opinion. No, I don't understand. I have not really understood the token like snaps to Demarcus Jones. Um, it felt like that, um, and they were random times. I thought maybe it's just to relieve some of the other guys, but I mean, Raphael and Mims right now, are, you know, do what they need to do. Yeah. I, I thought Allen could be that third guy. That's why I kind of look at it is okay. This is a that's a loss for state. Yeah, well, the other thing too is we always thought Mims was going to be the short short yardage guy, right? And you're mm-hmm. not seeing just short yardage. You're seeing him earlier on downs. Um, some of the play calls with Mims is kind of head scratching, like the uh, stretch play that we've ran a couple of times with him. He's not a stretch back runner. Um, so, you know, they've kind of set him up for failure on a few of those. But um, Mims, you know, had a really nice run, uh, had a really nice catch. Uh, and uh, I thought like two of those plays he was going to maybe score down in the red zone, but he just wasn't able to punch it in. But, yeah, I'm with and- you. Um, I, I think with the way we mix in, uh, KC in the backfield and those two, I think that's a that's a good solid rotation. And right now you're running you're running a four game winning streak. I don't think you're going to change a whole lot. Yeah. I think yeah. it, go ahead, Kelsey. Right. Go ahead, Lindsay. Okay, I think more than anything, it's kind of like a morale loss too. Um, Omdu Weather says, "I wish the rest of the guys didn't have to deal with the outside noise coming up on such a big game." And this is the same issue with MJ, right? Obviously, we lost something with MJ saying he's. Red shirting, but it was also a lot of noise, a lot of um, drama that kind of takes away from what the team is doing. Now, in MJ's case, it seems to have fired them up. It seems to have been a good thing. But again, you never want outside noise kind of distracting from the task at hand, which this week is beating UNC. So I think really keeping all that momentum that they had with MJ saying, you know, we don't need him. We can do this without him. It doesn't matter. Um, is really important here. So I hope that they are able to do that and kind of ignore that noise. But I do think it's kind of, I wish he would have waited until after the Carolina game to announce. He, I wish he just wouldn't have played and talked about it on Twitter following the game. Uh, Megan, I'll let you get the last point in here, and then we need to move on to. Well, I think just back. to kind of put a bow on it, we got Jordan Poole. I know Droop seventy five has it on there. He's another guy who I just need to mention, and he's not playing, you know, like big offensive snaps, but he's another guy. State's kind of shown on that he's been really important in the blocking game, so that's good for State. They'll be fine. Um, mm-hmm. Transfer portal, they can rebuild a team every year, and they'll find guys. So it's all good. Well, again, and, and, and just the last piece too from for me is that I mean, again, you you have UNC left, and then you have bowl games. So I mean, it's not like we're in the middle of the season. And this is happening. This is you know, this is towards the end of the season. So again, knock on wood. As long as Rafael can stay healthy and Mims can stay healthy, we should be fine. So um, anyway, y'all, let's jump on over some Tuffy's mailbag and some questions. Y'all, here we go. <laughs> All righty. So our first question here uh, from Tuffy's Mailbag, has the 2023 season been Dorn's best coaching job yet in his NC State tenure? Uh, uh, Mackenzie, give me your thoughts here first. Ugh, I'm kind of torn on this one because I, it's, I think it's between this one and the bowl game that got canceled two years ago. Totally I think that, that also could be be argued as his best one in his tenure um so just because 2021 season yeah 2021, 2021 yeah. right after covid just coming out of that and then i mean very much could have definitely easily gotten that 10 win season but the fact that we've overcome so much this season yeah. our guys have so many injuries different quarterbacks basically everything like we don't have we have the talent but we don't have the same like amount of talent that we had in 21 like all those upperclassmen and everything. Like right now it's basically like we have KC who's a true freshman out here balling out. So like that's one of our best guys. So I feel like we've overcome more this year. So that could be a reason it is, but out of talent wise, I feel like it could be argued that 2021 could be a toss up. 
Michael, what you got here? Um, that's it, it, it's it's definitely up there. I think twenty it's better than twenty twenty one just because twenty twenty one you had Leary the whole season and mm-hmm. you know he was solid. I think I'd say twenty twenty was a wait twenty very wait good year too. Wait twenty one did we have Leary the whole season that year? Yeah, I heard, that was I the year. I, oh, I, I I thought Bailey Hockman played in that year. No. No, Hawkman was 19 or 20, 2020. One or two. Yeah. I think yeah. 2020 was also pretty good because uh, yeah. that was Hawkman started that year and then Leary took over about halfway through. Yeah. And that was the year we won seven ACC games. Um, you know, we were, that was the true COVID year, wasn't it? 20? Yeah. Yeah. We were eight and four, but seven yeah. of those wins were ACC wins. So, right. I mean, that was a pretty good job, too. Yeah. I, th- I think so. it's a really interesting discussion. To me, I think it's last year. Like having to deal with the QBs yeah. like that. I mean, I, I get the wins and having the you have the record, you had the season where you basically playing all ACC teams and you have seven of those. That's the first that was there was some record he did where that was the first time that happened in a long time. Yeah. Um, you know, the 10 win season and are the nine slash 10 win season in 2021. That's a big one too. Uh, I just, I just think it's so hard to win when you have four different quarterbacks like and that just you have to rotate so many different guys to come in from Leary to I can't remember the other guys name from Jack Charleston Chambers Southern. Chambers to yeah. Morris to Ben Finley and you're still winning games like it would it, that just I I mean particularly that was the first time I've ever been done position. right mm-hmm. I I view it as that now he didn't get the numbers and like if he had gotten probably like say he got nine wins and one more win I think people would look at it in a different light, but to me, that was so hard to get to eight wins, and yeah. it was respectable. And like everybody was like, "Holy cow! Like this is this is really impressive what he's doing." Yeah. The, well, and to kind of make my case here real quick, and Lindsay, I want to kind of hear your thoughts. Is that with twenty twenty three, with the fact that you had a, a quarterback that was struggling a ton to start, especially against Louisville. You sat him. You brought in your your court. You brought in a quarterback, and then he decides to sit. You also too get punched in the face by by a down the road rival, twenty eight to three, and going into a bye week, having to regroup, and then you go on to beat Clemson, Miami, Wake Forest, where NC State has a tough time winning at Wake Forest, Virginia Tech that we haven't won at since two thousand and four, and that nationally a lot of teams have a tough time uh, beating at, and now all of a sudden. When when the over under going into the season was six and a half wins total for per Vegas, you have a per FPI a fifty two fifty three percent chance of competing in a bowl game for your second ever program ten win season. Like that's that's pretty phenomenal. But yeah, Lindsay, give me your thoughts. Yeah, I don't know. I think a lot of the recent seasons have been close. I might want to stick with 2021 as well. I think we kind of have to see how this one ends up. But I think I could call this maybe the best comeback season, the most to overcome. Coming out of that Duke game and that bye week, the second half was a totally different team. Um, I think if we split the season in half there, the second half might have been, you know, Dave's best half season and there has been a lot that he has had to overcome as a coach and work through with quarterback troubles and things like that and I think that definitely needs to be taken into account here Um, so I think it's probably the best in terms of coming back from a place where people are like oh are we even going to make a bowl game are we mid like we can only put up three points against Duke to a team that is thriving in the second half of this season, but I don't know that I would necessarily call it his best overall. I think I'm holding out on saying that until the season's over. So real quick, just to kind of wrap this topic up. Um, I'm assuming more, very much more than likely Mike Norvell or Jeff Brom from Louisville is going to be your ACC. I think coach it's Brom. Yeah. Probably I Brom. think that's yeah. pretty much a, a given, but I think, I mean, I, do we all think, I mean, I, I would be surprised if Doran doesn't get a vote. Oh, he'll get votes. He'll, yeah, he'll, yeah, he'll get a vote. He'll get a vote. Yeah, but uh, yeah, the only reason I don't think it's Norvell is because they they were like a 10 9 10 win season last year. Um, right, yeah. if, if my memory serves, I mean, so they, they were already he, building to something this year. He could get more yeah. votes after if they can uh win out this season and play good after Jordan Travis went down. I feel like he'll get some votes, yeah. honestly, because that's a big yeah, I mean, he'll get votes, but I, 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 you're saying I will say it's interesting. Uh, I can think back to Fuente winning it at Virginia Tech his first year. 
um, yeah, or yeah, second yeah. year. I'm, I'm sure. trying to think. Of, there's some, there's yeah. some coaches who've not had great track records winning it their first year. Yeah, just kind of yeah. Thought, so yeah. yeah, I mean, if anything, I I because I didn't get a say in what year I thought Dave did his best job, but I, I think that would be 21 where Dave should have won Coach of the Year and he got snubbed by uh, or is it 20? Whatever year that Notre 20, Dame got it, they gave yeah. everything to Notre Dame. Yeah, yeah. Frank yeah, Kelly, so, the Defensive Player of the Year, when Peyton Wilson yeah. probably should have won it that year too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so my my answer would have been 20. I thought he did some of his best work, um, especially with the roster shake because it was kind of similar this year. Um, plus, he okay. won all those ACC games. Yeah. Well, that, Moving, he, that, I'm sorry. Go there ahead. You go. You can I final thought, Michael. I, go for it. That year, I you were coming off a what four and eight season, so mm-hmm. you know the expectations for the 2020 season. season were so good. <laughs> yep. Good point. Thank you for backing my information up, Michael. <laughs> I won. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. All righty. Uh, moving on to our next mailbag question. What's your favorite NC State UNC game you have attended? Easy. Easy. My, se- my senior game two years ago, 21. That was the best game I've ever attended, honestly. Easy. The comeback game. Great. The Mecca being right in yeah. front of me. Oh, my God. I loved it. All right. So, real quick. So, so of the six of us, and let's know in the chat who, who also two agrees 2021 UNC. But you said it well, did. You said it yeah, it wasn't out that game either. Okay. Well, so, so that's what I'm saying. I know. I'm just that, saying. That, I'm just saying. Fair. Agreed. Let's go ahead and get that one out of the way. Okay. So nobody else would say 2021 that if they attended that game. I'm about to say Greg right, right. better right. races. Attended, sure. Right. But <laughs> yeah. right. I think I was here's, there. <laughs> here's my answer for what I attended. Again, yeah. uh, I think it was the 2014 mm-hmm. season or 2015 season. Wait, 2015, I think it was. Or no, was which was, 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 was at UNC? Is at UNC and yeah, yeah, Jacoby, State. Jacoby went like 35 to zero. 2014. And oh, with uh, um, gosh, they called him Marquise Williams. Yeah, I love that because I was there at Carolina and we just run ran right over them, and I was like in the corner of the stadium just cheering, and I had all the Carolina fans around me who didn't like that, so. It was pretty cool. So, 20, Michael, whoa. Okay. go ahead. What up? Um, what? 20, that, uh, that was going to be mine. 2018. Was that Reggie Gillespie? Yeah, five was, touchdowns. Yeah, he scored yeah. every point we made. And then the fight in the end zone. That was it wasn't a, a fight. Remember, though. it wasn't a fight. <laughs> yeah, a fight didn't matter. <laughs> yeah, 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 30, yeah, 30, yeah. 35 to 7 HS. Yeah, that was awesome. That was awesome. Mm-hmm. Great. Great yeah, seven. that one was in Chapel Hill too. But it was but basically yeah, was... thirty-five to zero until the very end, where they gave him a garbage touchdown, and it was like, okay, Wait, now it's not a shutout. Wait, is that the twenty eighteen game? That's the twenty fourteen game. Yeah, twenty eighteen was the overtime game where, yeah. where Reggie scored five touchdowns. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, I saw Reggie. Did, I saw Reggie a couple weeks ago here in High Point, and uh, it's like, dude, you still think about that game? He's like, oh yeah. He's <laughs> 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 like, it was awesome. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Actually, my vote is, is it's actually interesting that nobody else has said this too, but I mean, last year's game, in my opinion, more because yeah, of the fact I that... I didn't attend I'm, it. <laughs> I, well, well, yeah, no, it, well, even more in the chat. I mean, even nobody's even said it too, but I mean, just yeah. winning a game at UNC, at your rivals, always, in my opinion, more satisfying not than in your own though, house. Remember? No, okay. Uh, <laughs> the rivalry okay, game two weeks ago. And again, because I mean, like that game was long. It was it was probably a five hour game. Like it was a long game. Uh, it was a nail biter. And again, it was a game that we honestly had no business winning. Like there's no reason UNC should have let us win that game. And yeah, but no you forgot the best the game, part. But, and then and then Greg got on the field, baby, and waved that flag, man, and got and got told to get off the field by security. I guess and how how he didn't get arrested, I have no idea. But I love it. Go ahead and make it. so. I, I think the question is which, to your point, Layton, like which uh, game was better, the 2021 or 2022 game? Like yeah, that's an got, interesting yeah. conversation because yeah. the that's odds of winning the 2021 game were really low, and the how it happened was just yeah. crazy. And like, then we had no chance. <laughs> yeah, the, but then, but then, but then, the going best tweet was 99 percent by Layton. Like the the F, the ESPN 99 uh, percent chance to win. The onside kick, the both those touchdowns. I mean, yeah, right. Was, but then, like the. You know, having Ben Finley, and I remember everybody before kickoffs like, "Oh no, we got Ben mm-hmm. Finley!" Like, we had that. This detail. game's over with, and I remember like freaking like, mm-hmm. "I cannot believe we're I winning the game." This dude is balling out right now. So, 
Uh, yeah, and, 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 and one, one quick question, one note, uh, David Jones. I think the Russell Wilson game in 2009 or 2010 was a two yard Hail Mary, I think is what it was. Yeah, yeah, two, yeah. yeah two yard, yeah, it was like two or three yards. Uh, I thought last year's like, like state controlled the game for the most part, and then kind of Carolina had that comeback at the very end, and then uh, they got down to a field goal kicking contest, and uh, you know, that, that, that guy, uh, I don't know if I don't know if his face has been seen on at Chapel Hill since, but actually, I think Noah he, I think Burnett. He's still there. I think yeah, he's, he's still, still their kicker. Yeah, he's still their kicker. Yeah, yeah, he's still their kicker. Um, thanks for running my joke, but um, <laughs> hey, just straight facts, homie. Yeah, no, I appreciate you keeping me keeping me right. Uh, we don't we don't we don't need to be labeled by YouTube for misinformation. Um, but uh, no, I last year was good though. I I don't know, like for me, like the last three that I like like at Chapel Hill and, and, you know, the five touchdown, they all, they all are unique for various reasons. And I think that's what makes it so great when, when you start right. talking about these things, because, because there's always a common thread, right? You have the Russell Wilson Hill, Mary, you know, you had the geo punt return, like the H game has a label, if, if you will. And I think that's what makes it, you know, that, that game will always be known as whatever happened in that instance. And so, right. Um, you know, you have the Jacoby running rough shut game. Um, yeah, it's just I think it's kind of cool that they each kind of have a label. Yeah, yeah. I was at the 2021 and the 2022 games, and I think there is something exciting about like winning at the other person's place. You know, we saw it with Virginia Tech, but I don't know. I feel like nothing beats being able to like rush the field with your own fans after. So I'm going 2021. Like I think that was more satisfying and memorable yeah and it was again, more improbable like, yeah the 2022 like you yeah. said we controlled most of the game unc came back towards the end and there was a field goal kicking thing and it was a nail biter but like by the end you were just kind of like oh it's over you know what i mean like we won thank god let's get out of here with mm-hmm. where's 2021 like it was mm-hmm. so exciting to be able to again Chances of winning were low it was so exciting to be able to rush the field with everybody and see like everyone at Carter be excited about it. And I love a home game. I love rushing the field anyway. So I know Greg, your experience was a little a little more rough than mine, but I'm saying 2021. I mean it's plus, memorable. Plus that was that made it an undefeated home season. I mean that was that was Good a point. huge deal too. So I feel like that just adds okay. into how great that game was. Yep. Good Post. point. Good point. All right, y'all. Last mailbag question here is so that somebody asked, what are our Greg's. top five favorite tailgate mm. foods? Greg. So, so, Greg, all, all of Greg's is amazing. No doubt about Whatever it. Whatever Greg's so, makes. So, so what I'll do is, is so what we'll do in this case, just to kind of keep this one quick, because we have a lot of tweets that we to get to. Uh, so each of us will name one that, and, and you can't, re- you can't repeat. So, so uh, Lindsay, I'll give you the honors first. All right. Buffalo chicken dip for sure. Oh, good All right. choice. All right. Kens, what you got? I'm trying to think. I'm good. Come back to me. I'm, I'm literally going through Greg's menus right now. As we're <laughs> talking. All right. Megan, what you got? Oh, man. I, um, so when me and my wife do it, we just, we go all out. We do like a ribeye steak and do all that kind of stuff, man. We're like, we're like, but if it's a classic tailgate food, I mean, just a good burger, man. It's just, it's just good. Yeah. Uh, Michael, I'll go wings. Okay, all right, all right Greg, uh, give us, give us. It, it's, it, I know yours ain't gonna, be like, gonna, be, gonna like be like some new England yeah. lobster tails <laughs> with a, some some fancy with the balsamic ajou. Yeah, he's time. gonna have some <laughs> fancy name for it. Uh, so you're not wrong, Macon. We do make some good lobster rolls. <laughs> yeah, um, see, I like when, to see the when, menu when, <laughs> when, when, when BC comes to town. But but my my all time favorite. It's it's definitely a meat, so I'm gonna go probably steak tips. Mm. Okay, all right, Kens, what you got? Now you got one now. Those sliders, Greg's sliders. Oh, sliders are good. Are yeah. Top. yeah, those are easy to eat too. Just yes. Yeah. Yeah. When you're Love especially it. when you're low intoxicated, you can just grab like four or five. Side note, like I think that's the key to a tailgate. You gotta have good finger right? food. That's it's not a tailgate food. food. Yeah. It can be a tailgate food, but like to me, I know when a party is good when they have like meatballs. Like eat like yeah. that's just a different. Yeah. I'm like that. This is a good party yeah. already. Yeah, well, you, <laughs> might, you must have already seen my menu because we're doing some bacon wrapped smoked meatballs this week. So, Dude, uh, I may, you know. you know, I would I'm be sure. there if I could. Man, that sounds so good. 
Yeah. So before before I give mine, a couple in the chat here. I got David Jones, Wings, Dirty Rice, uh, Michelle, Stew. Brunswick, Brunswick Stew. stew. Always, uh, especially in the fall game. You need that Brunswick Stew when it's a cold game or a chili. Yeah. Hunter says wings, low country, low country boil, boil yeah, pimento cheese sandwiches, boiled peanuts, and bacon Ooh, wrap. Mm. Dove? Dove? Yeah, so I was I was all on board uh, on this. Until you you whether, if you haven't tried the KFC <laughs> nugs, you guys should. Yeah. Uh oh, hold on, hold on. Hey, 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 hold on. Go back to that one. Go back to that one. KFC you know, this nugs. is a Bojangle channel. Get out of here with those KFC nugs. Right. Oh, man. I know it's Bojangle, but KFC oh. so good. Yeah, man. I didn't know there were a lot of good Bojangles. Guys, y'all are going to hate me. Not only did I go to UNC, but my family was a KFC over Bojangles tailgate family growing up. Th that we map pull up to out. Carter Finley with the <laughs> KFC tailgate stuff. That, that, that map definitely checks out. KFC is definitely a Carolina crowd. Hey, Bojangles. no, no, no. I would just show up I'm to not going to lie. KFC is pretty good, man. It is good. Coastal is so good. I'm not going to lie. KFC is pretty little... good. Yeah. Well, see, that's the thing is that for me, I think KFC sides – is is good like their mac and cheese yeah. their baked beans Chicken's good though man the coleslaw yeah. well but like but so, like for me all right so so my answer is bojangles more because every single time my wife and i go to a concert at want creek we always grab bojangles on the way there to tailgate and eat man it's just that's a good tradition like, right i got like a like, good little tradition yeah. like that chicken supremes with the honey mustard and, and, See, but and we're talking supremes. Supremes. Yeah. Yeah. Match. We're talking Supremes oh. though, like that's its own game. It's it's not you can't touch <laughs> it. We're talking We're like talking the chicken. <laughs> I get the Bojangles is crunchy and that's good. And I trust me, I love good crunchy chicken like that. But like I don't know, something about KFC chicken I love too. I mean, so you I can't know. mess with the Colonel's thirteen original secret recipe spices, man. Like that's a whole different, <laughs> a whole different conversation. Man, Ooh. yeah, my, my my mouth is watering just thinking of all this food right now. <laughs> David, David's yeah. right, yeah. Yeah, well, my hey. wife just sent me a picture of our legs of lamb for this weekend, so that's pretty cool. I'm ready. Ooh. I'm ready. Somebody yeah, just yeah. tuning into this show right now is like, what did I just turn on? Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Top, top is this seven. Food Network or Tuffy right. Talk? I don't yeah. even know. Exactly. No. Uh, but anyway, though, y'all. So, uh, yeah. So, either way, uh, Cam, uh, yes, make sure, uh, you know, you got, got to check out Greg's tailgate, man. He throws the uh, one, if not the best tailgate in, in NC State, no doubt about it. All right, y'all, let's finally jump on over to some Tuffy's Tweets of the Week, y'all. Um, actually, you know what? Before we do that, because this wasn't even a Tweet of the Week, because uh, I completely forgot to add in there. But got to give a shout-out real quick to, uh, first of all, NC State Wrestling, man, for absolutely dominating this weekend uh, by a score of uh, NC State won 48-5 to over Sacred Heart. And then they beat uh, Bingham, Bingham 10, 35-9. And there's one more. Uh, they had Army last week. Army thirty four to six, yep. and again, this team's number two in the country, y'all. And again, with with a, a crazy schedule coming to town, Cornell, Oklahoma State, you have UNC at home, uh, Virginia Tech at home. Like it's an amazing home schedule, y'all. So if you haven't bought season tickets yet, make sure to go and do it, y'all. Do not miss out. Um, and uh, uh, preacher man coming in, Greg, you need to tailgate before wrestling matches. Hey, I, I've I seen mean, some people out there tailgating. I might, I might have to go uh, hang out with them. The the wrestling parents throw one heck of a tailgate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so they, it's called I mean, pops. Uh, what are they? I I, I saw their. Uh, yeah, they have a pops. they have a sign. Yeah, they have a little sign there. Yeah, it's pretty clever. Uh, I can't remember the name yeah. of it, but yeah. Um, but anyway, y'all. But again, shout out to the wrestling team for absolutely dominating so far, y'all. Um, because they were not as a part of this. And also, too, Ice Pack are down three to two. Uh, in the Governor's mm -hmm. Cup game, so we need them to come back here in the third period, y'all. Can't can't let can't let let the let UNC start off with a win and go to and go to Hell Carolina week. Can't do that. No, uh, no, no, no. Not do that. It'll be the only All one we get though. So if they do win, ooh, I like it. I like it. All right, y'all. So with that being said, let's jump on over some toughy tweets of the week, y'all. Here we go. All righty. First and foremost, y'all love this tweet right here. Got to give a huge shout out uh, at da a Dave uh, Hale joint uh, tweeting out that power five teams to have won. It's a list of power five teams to have won eight plus games in each of the last four seasons. Georgia. Alabama, Notre Dame, and wait for it, NC State. And I mean, I saw this and I was like, I mean, just send this to every single Dave Doran hater out there, man. Like that's 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 a league company right there, y'all. I mean, like this isn't like like all right, teams to score between 30 and 35 points 
while having a turnover margin between eight or nine, like, you know, basically like, like finding a way to make it like an elite list. Like this is like, it's simple. Power five teams to won at least eight games in at least the last four seasons. Very simple. And there's four teams and it's Georgia, Alabama, Notre Dame, and NC state. Like that's, and it's it's the only time in program history we've ever had four seasons with at least eight wins in every single season. So I mean, that's phenomenal stuff right there. And that 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 to me is is the like that is the all the evidence you need to show that this program has grown. This program has grown. It is has stayed consistent over the last four years. And I think honestly, not I'm not saying this is the floor every single year, but I think over you know a given period of time of of two or three seasons. Eight nine wins, I think, is 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 a, is a safe floor moving forward, at least at least from everything I've seen. So, uh, uh, Greg, g- give me your thoughts on on that tweet, man. I mean, beautiful stuff, in my opinion. Yeah, I I love it. I I despise our fan base sometimes when they go, well, you know, we play against a soft schedule and like like all the stupid detractors. And look, you can say what you want, but the proof is in the pudding when you win eight games in the last four years, right? Like. We schedule about as well as other ACC teams on par, um, and mm-hmm. we still go out, and you still have to go play an ACC schedule. And, and mm-hmm. you know, even if you, you know, win three games and you're in your uh, out of conference, or if you win all four, you still got to go win another four to five games in ACC play. And uh, it 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 takes it takes a, a good strong program to be able to do that in a good culture. And I think that's what coach. Coach Dorn has done and built, and uh, you know, like we kind of said earlier, other than the COVID year, you know, this has been a, a strong program over the last four or five years, maybe even six, where you know we, we're right around that seven eight win, and um, he just goes out and just gets wins, man. That's all he does is get wins, and I don't care who they're against. Mm-hmm. Uh, quick update: Ice Pack scored, so let's go three three tied game, y'all. Uh, all righty. Um, but yeah, uh, Kins, give, give me your thoughts. Uh, you know, again, I, I think with Doran, another thing too, which is so underrated is he always has, I, I think a phenomenal coaching staff around him. Like, you know, I, I think that it, it's, it's an unbelievable, unbelievable thing to go into pretty much every single season knowing like you have great coaches that can develop and, but also they can find, they can also recruit well too. Like, you know, I think it's really the best of both worlds. Yeah, that I mean, that's what I was going to say is like we have a coaching staff that is amazing through the recruiting process, but not even like we don't even have to get five star, four star, five stars in all the time. It's the no. production that our coaches give out, like they build them on and off the field. Like mm-hmm. the guys that you hear after every game, like Jalen Scott was this past week. He's saying Dave just doesn't coach them on the field. He's turned him into a man off the field. So it's like. Our coaching staff is built different in the way that they, one, produce a crap ton of NFL talent, but also produce some great men in the process of that as well. And there's not a lot of coaching staffs out there that can do that. And definitely not a lot that can do that with not as many four or five stars. Well, and again, the the culture to me is just still absolutely unmatched. And and, uh, again, y'all, like this is a guy that, that, that that gets us man and uh and, and i mean and, and builds leaders man like i mean I, i'm sitting here saying would peyton wilson have been what peyton wilson is right now if he has stayed at unc i'm not so sure uh, uh you know I, I i truly do believe that tony gibson and doran have have really built him uh, you know on the foundation he already had in terms of his ath- athletic ability and skill level so that's kind of my thing too Lindsay. any 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 thoughts on this yeah, I think we need to give credit where credit is due. Obviously, a lot of this is Doran um, and is that team culture. But I thought this was just a really interesting stat. Obviously, State's company here is number one, Georgia, who are back-to-back national champions, number eight, Alabama, and number 17, Notre Dame, who, by the way, are also eight and three. Um, and Greg saying people say, oh, we play a soft schedule, whatever. We had another tweet in here saying State was ranked as having the 26th strength of record by ESPN this season. And, you know, we're 8-3 going into that final home game, but remained un- remain unranked in the AP poll. We're 24th in coaches. But it kind of makes me wonder what's stopping State from being a football dynasty, from being a Georgia, a Bama, a Notre Dame. Like, where – why is the money – yeah, why is the money, the recruits mm-hmm. and stuff – not coming to a big degree like what do y'all think we need to do to be in the same kind of 
league as Georgia, Alabama, Notre Dame. <laughs> it's never going to happen. I mean, to me, it starts with championships, right? I mean, yeah. that's the difference. And at some point, states got to win them. I hear what you're saying. Those are all great. Those are all big, important things. But that's the difference yeah. between the, all of those other teams. All the teams have won championships recently. State has not. And they need to find a way to do that. I think if they do that, you kind of break through another glass mm-hmm. ceiling right there. And you – start earning that respect you deserve, I think, more and I more. totally agree, but it's hard to win a championship when you're, like, getting snubbed by a people. Like, last week we said State was, like, the only team with a 7-3 and three record or better to not be in the AP poll. Now they're 8-3 and three and still not in, which is kind of interesting. I think extending college football playoffs to 12 teams is going to be huge in allowing teams to kind of break through and – um, break that glass ceiling teams that otherwise have not been, you know, decade long football dynasties, but it's hard for state if they're not getting those AP poll votes, which I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't even put stock in the AP poll. Sorry, kids. I don't, I, I don't want to take your thunder. It's really the only poll that matters now is the CFP poll. Uh, the coaches poll and the AP poll mean, mean nothing. Um, it's all about the, about that CFP poll. Uh, but I get what you're saying. Here's the thing with the AP poll. It's a lot of uninformed writers uh, or writers with biasness. Yeah. Um, I, I've seen – we have this one knucklehead up in our place that uh, last year was kept ranking Carolina. I haven't followed him this year, but <clears throat> he was ranking them like way too high after crappy losses, and we've seen like, – we what, saw 25th? this year. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, like the guy in Fresno, he had them ranked like number 15 in the country after their losses to Georgia Tech and Virginia. So I don't put a lot of stock in, in the AP. Uh, the coach, if I had to put one that's not the CFP, it would definitely be the coaches. But even that has its flaws because a lot of the times they, the coaches have someone on their staff doing all their ballots for them. Um, so anyway, I'm my gonna, two cents on it. I'm just going to be in a state fan. I've, I'm perfectly fine with not being ranked because it I seems like, like every, time, every time we are ranked, it just seems like – I don't know if we get cocky. I don't know what it is, but like in any like basketball and football, once we get ranked, it's like that next game. We're like, what happened to our team? Yeah. <laughs> Where I they think some of it is the, and I think you maybe just get your head a little bit, but I think some of it is like you have you, your, your mindset is shifted from being the hunter to being the hunted. Yeah. And you get that little number yeah. next to your name. Those teams are hunting after you. You're the mm-hmm. team that, yeah. they're the NC state, so to speak, you're the whatever. So they're trying yeah. to come after you. And so I'm, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm okay. I'm okay. With that. I want to, I want I mean, we need to be comfortable with that. Right. They need to figure that out. Yeah. Yeah, I think we play better when we're disrespected. If I'm being completely honest, I think that our guys, I think our guys yeah. respected a lot more because it's like, Hey, like we know what we can do and we're going to go out there and show them if they don't believe in us. I mean, that just puts a little bit more like kick in their step. If I, yeah. or in my opinion, I think- yeah, and he's right. I think there. Everybody, everybody does. Everybody does. I mean, there was clips from after Georgia won the national championship last year. There were clips of their players saying like nobody believed in us. Y'all said we were going to go. So oh, I know. I was like, no, me a break. no Give one me a break. said Georgia was going to go. Sit. That's <laughs> yeah. That's, that's how good that's made up. Yeah. 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 Nobody yeah. believes in Georgia, right? Yeah. Right. Exactly. So it, every team, it's every coach should and probably does find every you know motivation tactic they can. Well, and here, let me add, you know, one kind of one thought for Lindsay's question of what's kind of holding us back from being, you know, the Georgia, Alabama, you know, you I'm name it. Uh, go ahead. Answer that too. No, you go. Right. Okay. Uh, and and so, yeah, we'll get Michael's answer and then we'll move on here to our next week. But uh, one of the things I think is a difference maker is when you think about Georgia, Bama, Notre Dame, Ohio State, Michigan, one thing is that I think is a common theme is that when you look at fans nationally who are college football fans, you know, if if I if I wake up one day and I say, and I'm not a, if, if I've never been a fan of college football, but then all of a sudden I say, all right, I'm going to be a fan of a college football team, you know, and I don't have somebody like right next to me. I, I'm thinking to myself, okay, well, which teams am I going to cheer for? Well, I'll cheer for Georgia, Alabama, Michigan, Ohio State. I mean, just because they're big names, they win very often, and. You know, it, it and, and you can find their jerseys almost anywhere. Like, you know, it's it's just it's easy to be a fan of one of those big guys when you have no ties to them whatsoever. I mean, I'm, I'm sure Ohio State, I think, has so one you, of the largest so you're saying most Carolina characters. fans. Yeah, it's like a bandwagon fan easy to have. Like I mean, but the difference I said wins all the time. That's the difference, Greg. So anyway, <laughs> uh <laughs> uh 
but so so i think that's my thing is is like okay like there's not going to be a person that is a state fan that doesn't have some kind of tie to nc state whether it's their family grew up watching it they went to state they live in raleigh like that's how you be and so i think that because one of the ways you get more money is you have more fans and to have more fans you have to have more pull and just you know again you're not going to get the pull besides outside of ties than by being you know in state but uh yeah. michael go ahead and give your answer yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think we'll ever be on the the Alabama Georgia level. We don't, have, no, we don't okay. have the you know tradition and history behind that. We're on but, our own uh, level. That's fine. I, yeah, okay. but I think when you talk about what's holding you, holding us back from winning just you know ACC championships, I really think it's the only thing it's missing is just a little bit of luck on our side. I mean, sure. to be honest, you gotta get time. lucky with you gotta get lucky with the schedule. You gotta get lucky with you know who you play. Louisville's um, the perfect example, right, Michael? This yeah, year, yeah. I mean, they well, they're, not playing, they're not playing Clemson, Carolina, or Florida State. Yeah, the uh, Wake in 2021, they won the division, and they and they lost to Clemson and still won the division because, because we, beat we beat Clemson for right. them. So it's like, yeah, I think that's it's really it, you have to get lucky sometimes. Yeah, everything, well, all the dominoes have to fall into place for you, right? You you can't I get mean, injuries. You can't, like you said, schedules. Um, when you play them in the year, right? Because you can play a team where it's coming off, they're, they're injured, right? Maybe their start quarterback isn't available when you play Florida them. State. Like, yeah, Louisville right. may win an ACC championship because Jordan Travis broke his leg against Northern Alabama. Yeah. Which, by the or, way, why are you even playing? Anyway, that's another I know, that's so <laughs> random. But even talking about when you play teams, I think if we played Louisville again now, at this point in the season, yeah. I would be way more confident that you know, that could have been a win. We lost by three to Louisville, only allowed 13 points. Right. And so I think a lot of it does come down to timing and luck and everything working out. And I hope it does for State one of these seasons. Heck, if we played Notre Dame after our bye week, I feel yeah. like we could have beat Notre Dame. Yeah. Like, I feel like we Absolutely. could have one loss right now and that would be Duke. And I still think we could have beat Duke if we played them after our bye week. It was just timing. Yeah, yeah. like I said, Notre Dame is eight and three too. Like, they're number 17 an AP, let's see what they are in coaches. Regardless, I think that could have been a win in different circumstances. But but, but we, we just threw the quote up there from Vincent. Money in the schools are huge. So yeah. money money is everything. Like you can build new facilities because let's be real, these kids love shiny new toys, right? They like to see like, like South Carolina has a slide. Yeah, South Carolina has a, a recording studio. These guys have barber shops. They have got what? Movie what courses? Theaters. Yeah, I'll batting cages, whatever it is, right? Yeah, movie so, theater in their facility. Yeah. Oh, that's so. That's probably why they're playing so great right now. I mean, geez. Right, right. It yeah. doesn't always equate to success, but it doesn't hurt, right? Like, yeah. that's what an eighteen-year-old likes to see. They're like, oh, look, when I'm done with practice, I can go well, play pump play. What, like the recording money. studio is like what? It's not even a sport. So I, 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 I get it. I get and it. I know. <laughs> but the other thing I'm going to say about money, uh, to Vincent's point, is when these Alabamas, these Michigans, these Ohio States, Texases, they can go out and 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 uh, hire analysts and, and all these other off-field people to where you can take some of the pressure off your coaching staff and you can delegate more. Um, so it, it all it's all relevant. Yeah, agreed. All right, y'all, let's move on to our next week of the week here. Got to give a shout-out to our guy, man, Brandon Armstrong, winning Kobe ACC uh, quarterback of the week. Uh, his uh, uh, his statistics over the last two games, have had he's had 70% completion, 7.3 yards per attempt, three touchdowns, passing, no interceptions, three yards, three sorry, three rushing touchdowns, 29 rushes for 219 yards, 7.5 yards per carry, five explosive runs and 19% explosive rate in passing game. And I mean, he's been absolutely phenomenal over these, right. over these last uh, few games versus Wake Forest and Virginia Tech. Go ahead. Well, his, his rushing number should be 240 yards because he took not negative 21 on the last two drives. Yeah. Um, so that's yeah. really not even a fair, fair assessment. Um, True. But yeah, he's just been awesome. I mean, it's, it's really good to see that, his final his final taste in his mouth is going to be a positive one right because exactly. it could have you know he, he could have been end up being benched and you know it that's probably not the way he wanted to go out and i'm sure um, plus, this will be a, a nice a nice final chapter to his college career especially wasn't, that his, wasn't that his first win at Virginia Tech as well yeah we had so many first wins we had uh coach Dorn's first win there uh Brendan Armstrong coach and I and we coach TJ that. 
And that definitely like hits different for Brennan too. I mean, you've been playing there multiple times at Virginia, so it's like a different type of win for him. So I'm glad he got to ball out against them. Yeah. And especially too, uh, like when you look at PFF, he had the third highest uh, rating behind No Shocker, uh, Kev Exception first, and uh, Trent Pennick second. Uh, again, like it's it's just it's. I mean, it really did honestly bring a tear to eye, tear to my eye, man. Seeing seeing this guy play so well, man. Like this this guy's been through so much. I know Doran could not stop talking about how phenomenal of a person, of a leader, of a teammate, of a uh, like this guy is. You know, and how how much he brings to this team. Like, you know, I, you know, I still think about people saying like, why did we bring Brennan in, man? Like, like why? And honestly, I think that there couldn't have been a better quarterback to fit our offense right now than Brennan because of the fact that, I mean, you couldn't have a pocket passer guy, you know, that, you know, run this offense and be effective. Like you have to have a guy that's willing to run the ball. That's willing to just, 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 Take the easy, take the easy stuff. Like you know, pass off to a running back. You know, it's fine. You know, run the ball. Like whatever it takes, get the job done. And I mean, when you watch every single touchdown drive against Virginia Tech, it was effective. It was smooth. It was like it, it was gorgeous. And gotta give a shout out to a night too. But Brian Armstrong, first and foremost, man, hats off to you. Salute to you, man. I'm ready so, for him to ball out. We this appreciate game. you, man. No, seriously, he's been phenomenal. And uh, and uh, hey, he has a perfect opportunity. I think in my eyes, he's he's already built a strong foundation on you know his legacy at nc state with a win at wake forest and win at virginia tech beating you know if he could pull off this win over drake may and uh you know in car finley man dude that'd be that'd be a, that'd be a tough that would be really to sweet that'd be a him. storybook ending i think yeah, sweet for him after the season he's gone through to just kind of mm-hmm. like be like you know i can hang my hat on this like not not the unc win but like how i how this year went it was again poetic for him uh that would be cool I mean, he's got. I mean, UNC's a you know best running back in the ACC, best quarterback in the ACC, in my opinion. Um, at times, he's not played. He's had moments, but it's uh, it's gonna be tough if he can outduel Drake May. And he doesn't. The thing is, he doesn't necessarily need to out, you know, outduel him. He just needs to no. do his like job, him. right? Do his job, and it's it's uh, you know, I I would love to see it happen, obviously, but I um. Yeah, I think I think I think he's got I think he's got a good chance to do it. I feel like too with that, like not even just I mean to, to get two games he's in, it's been away games. Like this is his first time back at home. And I feel like that's gonna put a lot of uh fire in him as well. It's like look, like the last time I played at home, we lost. Like the last time I was a starter. So I feel like he's definitely gonna try to have that storybook ending on his senior night as well. So I'm excited to see what he does against them. Yeah, and I just say don't let it get twisted that uh you know he hates Virginia Tech, but he hates Carolina just as much because UVA and Carolina is a big rivalry. So you know that he'll be ex- extra amped up for that. Um, so yeah, yeah, I'm I'm ready. All righty. So moving on to our other huge news over the weekend here, uh, we have one other big piece of news, but this is got to be the next one we mentioned here. Now your three time national Dynasty. champion winners. In cross That's country, the biggest y'all. news of the weekend, in my opinion. Absolutely. Oh, I mean, no doubt about it. Three time national champions, which again, in a row, me if I'm wrong, in a row, and then correct me if I'm wrong. But besides these three, in states only ever won two national titles in the entire athletic program, right? Team, team, team ones, yes. Team national titles, yeah. correct? Yeah, and, and and now in the last three years, you know, tra- cross country has over doubled the amount of nat- team national championships mm-hmm. we have, like already yeah. in the, and and. So again, just huge shout out, shout out to this coaching staff and these girls, man. They've been absolutely phenomenal. And, and uh, I, I remember somebody co- uh, tweeted said, you know, now every single you know cross country runner in the whole country knows that 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 the pack runs through Raleigh. Like it, it, that that's this is like if you if you want to be like the top cross country and be on the top team, it's NC State. Like it, like like. Right now, we are the Alabama of football, like you know, in cross country. Like we are that in the cross country yeah. world right now. But yeah. but to your but to your earlier conversation, this is how you become those programs, right? You got to go out and win and be consistent at it. For sure. And then when then once you're consistent, like you said, your name gets out there, and people want to be associated with those types of programs. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And, 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 and go ahead, Michael. Uh, I want to mention they. The women's team were were down their second best runner. Tui ran, I think she finished fifth, but the the number two runner, 
um, she was out with an injury. So, I mean, it was even more impressive to get that. Yeah, the way they came back too at the end, right? Because it was like, uh, no, yeah, no, and then uh, yeah, I, I, I was, I was That's exactly how I was watching. It. Yeah, I was, uh, I was watching it at the uh, tailgate in Virginia Tech, and uh, and uh, I was running back and forth between grilling and the TV. I'm like, okay, what's mm-hmm. happening? The, the, uh they they ran much faster than I did to, from the grill to the TV. So. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, but again, y'all, and, and and I think it's just another, you know, jewel, you know, in the, in the, in the crown or jewel in the Avengers, you know, arm bracelet for for Caitlin Tui being adding to her, uh, you know, resume of being the greatest student athlete to ever put on the red and whites, and by far now the most accomplished uh, student athlete uh, to ever wear the red and white, no doubt about it. Um, so again, y'all, just got to give a huge shout out to to this coaching staff, to Caitlin Tui, to all these girls, man, for for yeah. absolutely balling out. And I think Caitlin can technically come back for one more year. She can. Yeah. That's, she, that's the craziest part. To. She still has one more year eligibility. Yeah, if she wants so, to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, which I mean, again, like, like, like seeing, seeing her emotion, uh, you know, with uh, Laura Haynes after, after, uh, you know, she, she saw they won the national title. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's no doubt she loves this team. She loves this university. And, yeah. uh, it, it, again, y'all, unfortunately today's day and age where, you know, loyalty is, is such a, you know, a rare word. There's no doubt that even somebody as, as amazing as Caitlin Tui, she loves NC state and it's awesome to see that. So hopefully she can come back and help us win a fourth one. That'd be phenomenal. So we'd love to see it. Mm-hmm. And uh, and just, again, even add more to that resume. Be like, okay, yes, Kaylin, we get it. Yes, you're the greatest you're of all time. <laughs> we got it. There's no doubt about it. Hopefully yeah. she's already submitted her uh, ring size for Jostens for her Hall of Fame ring, too, for the NC State oh, um, definitely. Hall of Fame. I, so I don't know how first ballot works, but yeah, I, mean, I don't know. Like the years after she graduates, like like Tom Brady level, like, Go ahead and put her in. There's no doubt about it. She did have a fever. This is interesting, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, so so her infinite hate, she had a – Kayla Tui actually had a fever of 102 during the race. I didn't know that. So she had 102 fever, and she still finishes fifth. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, got it. I'm serious, Greg. I need to get some shoes signed by her, man. I do. We need to do it. We need to figure this out. I'm telling y'all, man, it's 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 phenomenal. And again, go back to Carson National Championship State University. I love that. I like it. I love it. Um, and then other big other piece of news as well uh, with the women's basketball. Uh, Squeaking one of, of finally through against Rhode Island. Now they are all the way up back into the top 10 where this program, in my opinion, 100% belongs. Uh, you know, and, uh, and now they're going out to the Bahamas uh, to play a few games there. Virgin Islands. Um, for, sorry, Virgin Islands. Sorry. Um, and uh, again, it, it's, it's honestly exciting to me. Like, you know, like thinking back to – this time, well, not maybe this time last year, but nine months ago, thinking, man, like, what is going on with our program? And then, and then here we are, undefeated with a win against number two UConn, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, and a comeback win against Rhode Island. Like, I, I honestly was, honestly, not. I would have preferred. I would have preferred, obviously, take care of Rhode Island. But I honestly told myself, like, it's actually kind of a good thing that we face a little bit of adversity. Like, you know, like get punched yeah. in the mouth and let yeah. and let's fight through it and let's find a way to win. And we did. And and, yeah. and so it was good to see it. Yeah. yeah. And Carson here, women's basketball was unranked eight days ago. Like yeah. that's <laughs> kind of point to that's insane. Yeah. The I mean it was uh it was a little rough. I was listening to the game and then I, I was uh, we stopped and got lunch on the way home from from the Blacksburg trip and we ended up staying longer at the restaurant to finish watching the fourth quarter because it got real interesting and uh uh, we do need to figure out the inside that the Rhode Island's big. Uh, she hurt us yesterday, and then we just really hurt ourselves with the turnovers, and we didn't shoot the ball well. Um, freshmen, freshmen were looking a little bit like freshmen yesterday, but that was a team that probably last year probably saw us and, find, and finds a way to lose that game rather than win that game. And so, like we said earlier, good adversity, uh, good good test there, and uh, we got we got a big one this week with Colorado. We got a couple of big ones, but Colorado. Um, is no joke. I don't see. I didn't see. I didn't look at the polls to see where they're currently at, but I'm, I'm assuming they'll probably be top top fifteen. Yeah, I think that's a safe safe assumption too. Um, so with that being said, y'all, uh, I I wanted to make sure we touched on both those um, and see where we're on time. But we have just enough time to fit in one more tweet of the week, y'all. And uh, it's a guy we've talked about plenty of times, and we're going to talk about him again because he rightfully deserves it. And that is our guy, the man, the myth, the legend, Kevin Concepcion. Man, uh, you know he. Uh, 
ran for a touchdown. He caught a touchdown. He threw a touchdown. <laughs> and uh, BP Cox com- uh, quote tweeted and said, there are confirmed rumors that KC also drove the bus back to Raleigh as well following the win. I said that a few weeks ago. Yeah. And, and, and now he has a freshman record, program like record, it. for touchdown catches and receptions. And it kind of brings me back. I mean, I mean, first of all, I mean, I know we'll just kind of just take it one season and one game at a time here, um, you know, and just enjoy the 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 amazingness we're seeing in Kev Exceptional right now. But I said a while back that that this guy is at a insane rate right now. Like, you know, we were talking about, you know, where where is his ceiling all time? I, I, I say, you know, sky's the limit man like this dude's having oh. an unreal freshman season man and in my opinion he's, i mean he 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 is bought in he 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 from everything i've seen he loves his program everything i've heard he he wants to stay here and in my opinion he can leave here easily no doubt about it it's one of the greatest to ever put on the red and white in a wide receiver in a wide receiver position it's time but, to back up the brinks truck to his house right uh, oh yes he whatever it takes end up as ACC Rookie of the Year, he's been wrong. Not even close. Oh, Not even I close don't see who, who could no, be now. Fletcher, really maybe Mark Fletcher from Miami. He's got some solid numbers, but not well, He didn't start near. until like game four or five. Correct. Correct. So, well, go ahead, Kens. Huh? I'm oh, sorry. I, 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 I know you've been trying to get in. So, so sorry. No, I, I wasn't saying anything. I just okay, think he's, cool. I mean, I'll add that in there. <laughs> yeah. right, I mean, I think I think at this point, I don't know who would win AC Rookie of the Year other than him. I think he's kind of running away with it at this point. I think he's a rookie first team All American um, at this point. I don't think it's yeah. even close there either. Nice. Um, last last player to do that into state was Akeem Um <laughs> At least not that Rookie of the Year, but first rookie All American. Um, he turned out so, pretty good. Yeah, turned pretty, pretty good. good. First offensive player taken in the draft two years ago, right? So, uh, God bless. I, I think it's just crazy to me. Like, you know, did he was he a four star on any of those sites? Maybe one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, it could possibly I know, be he was. Yeah, yeah three. but High three star. You just yeah, never know with these guys, man. You just never know who's going to just blow up or who's going to be a bust. You just you just don't and. Right. I mean, the guy is literally – they've had the grab on TV. He's literally has some stats where he's first or second in the nation at, at the FBS level are all receivers in, like, three different categories. I can't remember what it was. It was, like, touchdowns or re- receiving yards or attempts. I can't remember. Yeah. Receptions or something like that. It was something crazy. It was, like – I. You know, NIL money is a big deal for us. We know if you guys need to make, you know, pick out Savage Wolves or Pack of Wolves, those are really good things. But, you know, guys like him, you, you know, Alabama's Ohio State, Georgia's the world are going to come calling and see what they can do. But like you said earlier, he's gonna stay, he wants to stay here. I just yeah. think, uh, man, what a what a gem. What a, what a, what a fine Dave Dorn and them had and, um, with Conception. I mean, they could have gone. And the crazy part is, They've only taken one receiver in two years, and it was KC. Like, yeah. well, if you're going to take one, you struck gold. I <laughs> pretty mean, good so, one. yeah, yeah, you're. So, I mean, the, everybody's complaining. It's like, well, he's been pretty good. So, yeah. We, I, I uh, at Wake Forest I, after the game, I talked to his mom uh, out, <laughs> out in the parking lot. Of course, she and, did. You uh, know, everybody. No one talked, was surprised. Greg Greg talked to him that, too. That's that's not the point of the story. Greg talked to him. You know his social too, Greg. You know anything <laughs> about him? Yeah, we'll, we'll talk offline. Uh, but uh, so I was just telling her, like, hey, we appreciate your son and everything he's doing for the university. She goes, oh, thank you very much. You know, typical, you know, mom. And she's like, but but I have to remind him every day, to, like, keep his head not so big. Um, she said, like, you got to keep him grounded. And uh, so she's uh, she M- mama bears taking care of her of her cub in that regard. But uh, yeah, just a really nice guy. You know, I, I, I see all the pictures of him taking pictures with kids and throwing wristbands up there and just literally the staff had to pull him off the field being like you can't take any more pictures you got to go yeah yeah like yeah so so i say all that is you know he's more than just a football player right like he's just you know seems like a really good dude and and and, uh you know we're lucky to have him and hopefully he'll be here as long as long as we we will allow it and preacher man bringing up the point uh his brother arian Mm -hmm. conception is also getting recruited by state and uh he's he's uh he's pretty solid too so excited to see what uh the two Conception brothers could do on the field. Uh, that'd be pretty awesome. 
Um, and also to Infinite Hate bring up the point I heard that they wanted Kevin Concepcion more. They even want to know Rogers. And and I mean, we we've said, I mean, we've had Ryan Williams on from Inside Pack Sports, and he said that when he went to all the North Carolina camps, that there was one guy that stood out to him, even above you no know, Rogers, Taylor, you name it. That was Kevin Concepcion. Kevin Concepcion was by far the most dominant guy there at camp. So uh, it's not a shocker, at least in their eyes, and uh, and and it's crazy to see from our eyes. Um, and, and the last thing which I'll say, uh, you know, to uh, Rodney's uh, comment here about hopefully Concepcion will not enter the portal. No. I just have to remind everybody once again that you're, no matter what your thoughts are at NIL, whether players should get paid or shouldn't get paid, whatever it may be, Reality. at the end of the day, it's the name of the game now. At the end of the day, it is what it is. Alabama, just like you said, Georgia, whoever is going to come calling. They're going to offer money. And we have to play the game. Like if we want to keep guys like KC, like, you know, as much as he loves NC State, if he has a school again offering him half a million, seven fifty, even a million, maybe I don't know what the market's like these days. Like that kind of money, like okay, there comes a point where everybody, ha- you know, hey, the the million dollar man said it best. Everybody has a price, like yeah. you know, it's it's, it's no longer about education. Them. It's a it's a business at this point. It's it's a business now. So so I I cannot say enough between Savage Wolves, uh, you know, Pack of Wolves, go get involved, y'all. Uh, you know, not saying that donate the house but if, if if you have someone you can donate please oh, they'll do. tell you they'll tell you right up you can get donate five dollars and like it's it adds whatever it takes you. like if i think they did say that i mean i don't know the number but it's kind of like a whole if every state fan just gave like five bucks it I would t- be like a few thousand dollars thousands of dollars yeah, yeah well i i came up with it on, on 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 our podcast earlier this year i said if everyone at an nc state football game ten dollars at the game that's five hundred thousand dollars a game that you could you could raise you know? Yeah, I mean, it's not, it's not. I mean, some people, I guess it could be, but it's just like I think it mentor. doesn't have to be this mountain. Even of, of all the kids donation. that are there, they gotta give ten dollars. Sure. Even yeah. I mean, look. <laughs> I mean, they they got teeth that are <laughs> falling out. Yeah, tooth fairy money. Use that tooth fairy money. You have a gold tooth in there, Greg. We could donate for charity. Man, I'm already yeah. giving enough money, brother. You probably yeah, give it up body parts. And yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If I had to broke my leg, I gotta give it more to nil. Greg's gonna yeah. shave his beard uh, <laughs> and donate to Locks for Love. Hey, dude, I, I, hold I'll on a second. If, dude, if someone right. does it, I, if, if we raise enough money, I'll do it. I don't care. I was gonna say, <laughs> I, 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 I really do think we need to get in touch with Tom Lavolsi and like, and like, dude, I, I would pay money. I pay good money to see Greg without a beard, man. That would be. I'll do it. <laughs> Like, we're like the heck we're we're right right this university. I don't care. This would kill yeah. you. Kill <laughs> you. It grows back. <laughs> I love it. All righty, y'all. So with that being said, we have hit the point, y'all, where we need to pick yeah, we get a the winner, rails. y'all. Uh, so first of all, thank you all so much again for tuning in. But now we have finally hit the point where we are ready to pick a winner, y'all. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here so just as a reminder once again y'all we did a jimmy v foundation fundraiser uh where you all you had to do was donate at least ten dollars uh to enter and uh for every ten dollars you donated you received uh one entry so if you donated a hundred dollars then you received 10 entries i mean you're 10 times more likely to win than somebody who went who only donated ten dollars etc and the winner gets two tickets and a parking pass to the unc game this saturday night they also will have an opportunity if they wish to come and join us at the toughy talk crew and get food and drink on us uh and then also too also we'll get an invitation to come on the uh, toughy talk live show in the near future to discuss NC State athletics with us y'all so it's a humongous prize and once again we actually raised 770 dollars y'all i actually did the recalculations Ooh. 770 dollars towards really good, the guys. foundation awesome. so so thank you to everybody yeah. it was absolutely phenomenal I, yeah. yeah i think the first year we did this it, we it was like 100 bucks our goal was like 100 bucks and we barely hit that so it's really yeah. good well, like we just hit two thousand dollars that we've uh, raised over the last right, three next years. Next year we raise a so thousand, we'll, and we'll figure out how to make it happen. That's right. So that being said, y'all. So uh, I have everybody here on the wheel, y'all. So what we're gonna do to make it make sure that it is completely random is so I'm actually gonna spend it two times. So that way it's not like right now it's not sitting on Amanda Wooler. So there's 
you know, you know, Amanda's not thinking, oh man, I'm not going to win. Well, that, I'm would right now. that would that would That's what I'm saying. Be like, what? So, Stop it on the first one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, 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 just to and also to just to make it a little bit more intense, I just I just wanted to spend it twice as well. So, so again, well, so like don't, don't show that. The, whoever's the first person, me. I'm sorry. I'm right? sorry. Nope. <laughs> We're gonna do it, y'all. We're gonna do it. Oh, <laughs> right? The way so rules are rules, and it's our show. We get do what we want. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Everybody, look away. Oh. So first spin, y'all. Oh, first spin. This is not the winner. So I feel like we need we're gonna be so this. mad. This, this is, is not the winner. winner. This is not the winner. Oh, I'd be livid. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we need some good. <laughs> I'd be so right, slowing mad. down. We need, some, we need some music. I know. Okay, it's. Is this still the first spin? It's still the first spin. I know, right? <laughs> I know. This wheel I, I, is. This wheel I know. is wheeling. I, 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 feel like, I feel like one would have been enough. I know. Well, if I had known that this it is the be... winner. <laughs> no way! No, I was like, "Oh, is she gonna win anyway." We're sticking to it. All right. So that was All the right. first spin. Deanna right. barefoot. Oh man, sorry. Nope. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, 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 dude. This is a terrible <laughs> idea, Lane. So We're doing it a second time. I think this one is the winner. The confetti was crazy. We clearly well, stated just... the rules. Yep. Is yeah, the music no, coming no. through? No. No, because I don't know how loud it is. I didn't. I didn't necessarily want to. And because oh, all you're hearing right now, is... that's all you're hearing. That's all you're hearing oh. right now. Just... Kind of play some music in the background. All right. So this is the winner for everybody. This Let's is go. the winner. Right here. Three more times after this. <laughs> We're doing three. I hope it's the same person. Oh. oh! Is it really? was meant to be. Oh, that was awesome. Oh, that is, see, I knew oh, no, it. Best idea ever, Leighton, to spend it twice. Great <laughs> idea. <laughs> said, well, that was a bad idea. This is an idiot. This is a great idea. <laughs> I, great. Lindsay, I don't know why you would not like this idea. I never doubted it. So, <laughs> Let, Lindsay, Lindsay, work. Right after we get off this, I need you to clip this. I need us to put this video out there. That was <laughs> phenomenal. That was that was ninety nine point nine percent. That was twenty twenty one ninety nine point nine percent right there. Like the likelihood of her getting picked twice. That is That's absolutely insane. Yeah, y'all will see this on Instagram tomorrow. Hey, Deanna uh, Barefoot, congrats on your win and go get some lottery tickets while you're at it because yeah, you yeah. are on a hotter, you're on a street. <laughs> oh, if the weather says like do it a third time just emotions. to see what happens. Actually, you should. Right? Just That's to make sure it's on a fluke. She do it pri- so many emotions do like it, do, do it privately, Lane, so nobody can see. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, Den- Den- Dennis in here. Best out of five. Best out of five. <laughs> I mean, I mean, if she wins, oh, were to get it again, I like that. That wheel is rigged. Like I would yeah. call it. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. Yeah, you might want to check it and make sure it's not three out of three. I, okay. I, I think I up. think Leighton rolls with loaded dice, man. Like that 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 thing was loaded. Well, yeah, that was. I think Michael Tracy's alias crazy. is Deanna oh Barefoot. I think it's actually so cool. Michael who won. <laughs> Mike, because Michael looked that really so excited cool. when they she won. <laughs> yeah, Michael's like, yes. I mean, yeah, congrats. <laughs> that, that was, was so pretty cool. excited for her too. I love that. All right, y'all. So that being said, I think that we'll end it right there beautifully because that was absolutely yeah, like epic. Uh, yeah, there's nothing we're going to talk about that's going to beat that, y'all. So first of all, Deanna, congratulations. Thank you so, so much. And then, and then yes, Miss Blackwater, don't worry. Deanna won anyway. So, so <laughs> I love how she probably uh, got off right after that. <laughs> I know. Uh, but anyway, y'all. So first and foremost, y'all. So again, we're going to be at the UNC game. We'll have Tuffy Talk. We'll have some Tuffy Talk hats there. We have also two, some t- new sorry, Tuffy Talk buttons as well, if you want buttons. Mm-hmm. And we also have mm-hmm. stickers Ooh. even as well, y'all. So make sure, again, uh, when when we put out the, the tweet of our location, make sure to come stop on by and, uh, you know, come say hey. And then, you know, if you want, again, some some stickers and some um, some buttons, uh, we got them, y'all. Uh, so, and they'll be absolutely free to you. So uh, anyway, y'all, and then for us, make sure, again, if you haven't already, Please do us a big favor and hit that subscribe button. As again, we are only six subscribers away from 8,500 subscribers, which would be awesome. So help us please achieve that goal. If you enjoyed this conversation, if you're excited for Deanna, hit that like button, y'all. And then uh, also to y'all, uh, any questions, thoughts, comments, make sure to put them in the in, in the comment section, and we will answer all of them as well. 
And uh, we have an exciting UNC preview coming up this week, uh, which we're actually recording right after this uh, live stream. Uh, so make sure to stay tuned for that. And also, if you haven't checked out our interviews with Alyssa Kunain, uh, sorry, Lisa Kunain, Lisa Kunain, make sure to go and check those out as well. Uh, but thank you all so much for tuning in. We appreciate all your support. It's been a phenomenal season so far. Let's finish this one out with a bang. Go to hell, Carolina. Go pack. Let's win it, baby. Here we go. Pack.